The Boy in the Striped Pajamas was written by John Boyne, an Irish writer, in 2006, later adapted to film in 2008. Following the story of a young boy named Bruno during World War II, though it is never explicitly stated, we can assume that the movie takes place later within the war, sometime between 1940 to 1944, because of the events within the concentration camp and Bruno's father's promotion at the start of the film. It is never said in the movie, but the book states that the camp Bruno lived near was Auschwitz, which was perhaps the largest and most well-known concentration camp, in which prisoners were put to forced labor while they were worked to death. There were three main parts to Auschwitz, Auschwitz, Auschwitz-Birkenau, and Auschwitz-Monowitz. The horrors in Auschwitz even branched to medical experiments conducted on infants, and even more experiments conducted on adults. Jewish people were taken from virtually all parts of Europe. Transports went on from 1942 to 1944 and in total roughly 1.1 million Jews were transported to Auschwitz. Not even half of that made it out alive. However, this movie is different from others of the same time frame, as this movie focuses on many themes rather than just brutality, murder, and war crimes. This film is laden with symbolism and social commentary on themes of trust, brainwashing, right and wrong, and innocence. These themes and perspectives are presented using Bruno's childlike wonder and innocence. But Bruno's is not the only perspective within the film. All of the characters present some form of theme within their own change throughout the story. Ralph, Bruno's father, is meant to present the perspective of the militant German, the ones fighting in the war and blindly following orders. Within that same area is Gretel, Bruno's sister, who is continually seen reading hate literature and finds herself taking bias to the German side. She becomes quickly fascinated by Hitler youth. Though she is only 12, she symbolically throws away her childhood so she can seem older. However, Bruno's mother is meant to display the other side of Germany, along with Bruno himself, the side of the everyday German citizen, with no idea of what is happening. This is evident by her descent throughout the movie as she finds out more about what is happening, beginning by Bruno mentioning the farm, and worsening when the blonde soldier, Kotler, says, they smell even worse when they burn, referring to the burning of Jewish corpses. Not only is Bruno's mother meant to represent cluelessness, Schmoll is as well. Schmoll is the little boy that Bruno meets within the walls of Auschwitz. He has no idea what his situation is in the same way that the other Jewish prisoners do, and it is even clear that his family lies to him so that he doesn't have to know all about the horror around him. The themes throughout the movie are difficult to pinpoint, as there are many, one of them even being the fence itself between Bruno and Schmoll, representing their literal and figurative separation. Though it can't be said that innocence itself is the theme, it plays a major role in presenting the theme of humanity, that there will always be good and evil in humans, and that what others believe is right may not always be the case. Bruno and Schmoll are both unaware of the position they find themselves in, yet a friendship still forms, just the same. And maybe even because of that innocence, Bruno finds a friendship with Schmoll. There are many things that can be said about this fantastic novel, because it explores in depth human behavior using World War II as the setting. John Boyne made it clear his ideas on the subject, that it was not only Jewish people who suffered, but that the war affected everyone at the time. It is extremely important that we do not forget what happened during World War II, because it is estimated that roughly 50 to 70 million people died. Germany is totaled around 7.4 million, 8.7 million Soviet soldiers, 60,000 civilian deaths, and even more British military deaths. The estimated USSR losses are around 26.6 million, and even more than that. We can't forget this important piece of history, and John Boyne presents that in his writing.